Now before starting this video, I want to make one thing absolutely clear. It does not matter which app you use for task management or for your checklist. I've been personally using the Things 3 app for the past several months now for my checklist and task management. And I wanted to make a video showcasing why it has won so many amazing design awards and why I personally feel it's probably one of the best task management apps out there. And I also wanted to showcase my personal system for using the app and how I keep track of all my to-dos. Now before jumping into it, I want to highlight some of the things that I do not like about the app. And firstly, it is only available on Apple devices. Now for me personally, I'm an Apple guy, so that doesn't matter to me as much, but I know that's a big turnoff for a lot of people and I really don't understand why they limited this just to Apple devices. So if you don't have an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac, you cannot use this app. So just right off the bat, I want to make that very clear. The second thing I do not like about the app is that it's not free and it's actually pretty pricey. It costs $10 for the iPhone app, but if you want the Mac app, you gotta pay 50 bucks for it. So you have to buy each app for the different devices separately, which is really weird. And the one thing I do like about this though is there's no subscription or anything like that. Once you buy it, you own it. So that's really great to hear, I guess. But just be prepared for that one-time upfront investment. Now, besides those two things, I do wanna say that I personally feel it was worth every single penny I paid for this app. So I wanna talk about all the positive things and why the design is so amazing and why people are raving about this app. Now, the best way for me to show you the app is to show you my system for using it. And I don't use it to the full extent that you could use it for, but I have found a good system that works for me. So take that for what you will. And I hope you enjoy a little insight of how I work with managing all my tasks. So the first thing I have here is my inbox and I treat this as my backlog of tasks and if you want to learn more about how to make a backlog of tasks I definitely recommend my video about brain dumping it's a great way to get all those thoughts in your mind down onto paper so you can manage them and categorize them so that's the first thing I have here my inbox is simply my backlog of tasks so once I created my large backlog with my brain dump I went through and I categorized all my tasks and the way I did that is through the built-in task tagging method over here. So you can just add a tag. And the cool thing is you could actually add multiple tags to one task if you want to have some overlap, which is very useful. And then the view of it is really nice. It actually makes little tabs across the top of the screen. So you can just focus in on one tag if you want to do that. Now, the interesting thing is I actually just discovered the tagging feature very recently. Prior to this, I was using something called areas. And what areas are, are more dedicated sandboxes within the app for specific categories. So you don't tag each task, rather you put the task into an area based on category. So the way this would look like is I would have a YouTube area and I would do a brain dump of all my YouTube stuff in there. I would have a personal area and put all my personal tasks in that area, et cetera, et cetera. So the categories don't really change, but the way you put tasks in the categories do change. And the reason why I got away from this is because it got really time consuming moving tasks between different areas. And whenever I wanted to add a new task, I'd have to go to the area, then add the task in there. And it was getting really frustrating having to move things around and just having to go into that one extra step, one extra layer into the dedicated area to add things into it. So what I did is I got rid of all my areas and I went to the inbox and I just do a brain dump of everything into there. And it's very very easy to quickly tag things in there compared to moving them around into different areas. So as I mentioned earlier, the inbox is my backlog of tasks. Anything in the inbox are things that I do have to do at some point, but are not immediately due right now. So what I do every night though, before I go to sleep, and I have a video about this too for planning for tomorrow today, I actually go through my backlog and I pick out the tasks that I want to work on the next day. And then what I do is I actually assign a date. And I don't plan more than a day or two out because I've learned that if I try planning for a week from now, a lot of times schedules will change, priorities will change, so I can't really do that. But I can very effectively plan for 24 hours from now and I can just pick out the things I know I have to do tomorrow and I take them out of the backlog and I put them into the right day, usually for tomorrow or the day after that. So once a date is assigned to a task, it ends up in the today section if it's assigned for today. And this is where I spend the majority of my time. Every day during the workday, I am constantly referring to this section and just making sure the things I'm working on are in reflection of the things I had planned for today. And whenever I end the day, I always make it a point to add in the things that I did get done that I wasn't planning to do because I love seeing that visual large list of things that I got done 
even if they were things that I wasn't planning on doing. And it's just a very nice motivator to see all the things that you're working on. Uh, even if you didn't plan for them, you did work on something, right? And if there are things that I didn't get done, I put them in the backlog. So it's a very visual representation of all the things you're getting done in that one day. Now, honestly, that is basically the extent of which I use this app. I'm only using the inbox feature as well as the today and upcoming sections. But there is a lot more you can do with this app. The next thing I actually do use that is kind of working behind the scenes is the syncing feature. I own the Mac app and the iPhone app. So between the two devices, all my tasks are always in sync. If I'm always like on the go or in bed and I want to just quickly add something that I forgot from earlier, I can add it on my phone and when I get to my desk the next morning, it's already going to be there waiting for me in the app. Another really amazing part of the app is the keyboard shortcuts. And what I often do is I just open the inbox section and I keep pressing command and command and command and and I keep adding in new tasks that way. And I also use command shift T for tagging my tasks. And once you get into the rhythm of it, it's very, very fast to do a brain dump and just add a bunch of stuff to your to-do list and it's even better checking them off afterwards. So the visual aspect of this and the way you add things and manage your tasks through keyboard shortcuts just make this app so pleasant to use. And even on the iPhone, dragging and dropping is a beautiful feeling. I don't think I've ever used an app that has such elegant dragging and dropping and swiping. So the small details like that is what makes this app worth the money to pay for. And one more feature that I don't really use too often is the projects feature. So if you have a large project that you're working on that has very clearly defined tasks, you can actually go ahead, list out all your tasks in the project, and then you can track your progress through completing the project. So it's very handy if it's not a brain dump that you're doing, but rather a very specific set of tasks that you have to do and nothing more than that. So if you wanna track progress through completion, maybe you're writing a book, or reading a book and you wanna write out milestones for that, this is a great way to track progress in a project. So to recap here, I gotta say this app is very well designed. If you're looking for a to-do app that is very clean, modern, and very functional, I strongly suggest the Things 3 app. They're constantly working on updates as well, which is very cool to see. But again, the hardest part about this app and the biggest con is committing yourself to that upfront investment, especially for the Mac app. 50 bucks is a lot of money for an application. So just keep that in mind. But once you get over that hump, I totally think it's worth it. And the benefit to that is there's no subscription. So it's not an app that you're paying for every single month. It's a one-time fee. There's no in-app purchases. It's just a one-time payment. So I gotta say, I, I do like that part of the app. And even though it's a lot of money, I think it's worth it. Thanks so much for watching. If you have a task manager that you're using that you're very passionate about, please leave a comment down below. I always love exploring other apps out there. So I'm very curious to see what you guys are using. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every single week. I'll see you guys next time.